Timothy chapter 3. This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of bishop, he desire the good work. The bishop then must be blameless, the husband one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, nor striker, not greedy or filthy liquor, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruled well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not the novice, not less being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy or filthy liquor, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let this also first be proved, then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so must the wise be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all saints. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of the deacon will purchase to them to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things write unto you, Apostles, Apostles, Apostle Paul said, These things write unto you and to thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tire long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God it was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this great opportunity that we can come together, Lord. I just pray this morning that you will open up our hearts, empty ourselves, Lord, so that we may be able to receive what you have for us this morning. Just pray that, pray that you give us a humble heart to receive your words, and that so, Lord, that your name be lifted up and be glorified today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Here in this chapter, the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Spirit of God, wrote about what are the requirements of certain offices in a local church, particularly the office of the bishop, which we commonly call nowadays pastor, and also the deacons. Apostle Paul uses the strong word here, must. Few times he, is, he mentioned the word must in verse 2, indicating, indicating that it is not optional. And then in verse 8, he continued with the office of the deacon, saying, likewise, whatever he said to, to the, for, the, um, for the bishop, he said, likewise, and went on with seemingly similar set of requirements. And finally, that's not what we're talking today. Finally, in verse 15, it says, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself, in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. Well, I will be talking this morning about the pillar and ground of the truth. Number one, he mentioned the church. The church is the pillar and the ground of truth. There is a whole bunch of doctrine regarding the church, but we will not discuss it here today. In general, the church is defined as the invisible body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Obviously a body has different, different parts with different functions in one way or another. But let us define a local church in a most simple and practical way. Let's say church for you. Church for you is a church, one of the church, or the Southwest Baptist Church, or any Bible-believing congregation who believe that Jesus Christ Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. If you remember Apostle Paul, above the pit, Apostle Peter, and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was talking before, that Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. 
And by the way, and by the way, my Lord, and I pray that He is your Lord as well, Jesus Christ did not mean that He is going to build a one story, a two story, or a three story building. He said, Upon the truth that He is the Son of God, I will build my church. The church is meant to be the people, the believers. That includes the pastor and everyone who professes to be part of the congregation. It simply means that the church is you and me. Whom the Bible says God so loved, whom the Bible says was purchased with the price of the blood of his only begotten son, whom the Bible says whose sins are forgiven and covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church is you and me. If you are here this morning and you're not 100% sure of a place in heaven, uh, Brother Frank has, has already talked about it. Um, if you are here and you are not 100% sure of heaven, you are not sure if you are part of the body of Christ, the church, same promise and same provision from, from the very beginning. God so loved the world, God so loved us, that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave His life in the cross of Calvary, shed His blood, that we may have eternal life. The Bible says we have done nothing for it. God has done everything. The Bible says we are born sinners and bound for eternal damnation, whether we believe it or not. A sinner is bound, we are born sinners, and we are bound for uh, damnation, whether we believe it or not. Uh, Brother uh, Bert talked uh, about it a few, few uh, Sundays ago, that in hell there are no atheists. Mm. Everybody Amen. believes that Jesus Christ is the Lord, but it might be too late by, now, by then. Amen. The Bible that says we are born sinners, but thank God, but as many as receive him in John 1 tell, uh, as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I thank God with his amazing grace, he provided everything to save a wretch like us. The church is you and me. Another thing mentioned here is in the verse. In this particular verse is the pillar and ground the pillar and ground a few Sunday nights ago pastor uh, Andrew talks about human human relations 101 Amen. today we're gonna be having structurals 101 <laughs> now we're going to learn a little bit about engineering here the pillar and ground Pillar and ground are two basic parts of a structure which common purpose is to keep something up, uh, something up high in the air. It might be a sky tower, a lamp post, a beacon, or a lighthouse, or even, or even simply to support a roof. It's, isn't it amazing that God uses tangible things to explain the spiritual principles or ideas? I had my degree in structural engineering 18 years ago, and the ultimate challenge in designing structures is how to keep it up in its desired position. That is the main goal in designing the structure. To explain a little bit further, pillars are what we commonly call the column or uh, post nowadays. A ground is commonly called the slab or pavement. Mm -hmm. What we are stepping on now is we call ground or ground or the pavement. But take note that under the slab, under this, is there still another one, another aspect of structures, and that it was that is what we call the foundation. The foundation is under the ground. There are three most common aspects to consider in structures: first, design, material, and foundation. Each failure, each failure, each failure may cause each, each, each uh, failure may cause damage to the structure in one way or another. Some may be repairable and some are not. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, if you know, if you know the Leaning Tower of Pisa, started to tilt when they were constructing the third floor of it. 
while they're on the third floor uh, working on it, a meter of soft foundation was found. Take note, a soft foundation, just a meter, is enough to make the, the great tower of Pisa to lean, mm -hmm. to till. Just a meter of soft foundation was found to cause the tilting. Now the Bible says the church is the pillar and ground of the next point, the truth. Yes. The next point is the truth. The purpose of the church being the pillar and the ground of the truth is to bear the truth up high. To bear the truth up high just like a structural pillar. Amen. It has to stay in the sky in the right position, not tilted, just like the Leonid Tower of Pisa. It has to be on its upright position. This pulpit is good illustration of a ground pillar and ground. This is a good illustration. You can see that it's standing up and it's holding something on top of it. It is vertically uh, upright and it is fixed. It's not moving or it's not, um, it's not tilted. The vertical part can be called the pillar and the floor as the ground with the purpose of holding something on top of it. In this case, a Bible. What a good illustration. There's a Bible on top of, the, of this pillar. While, it is, uh, uh, while, it is, while this is uh, effectively standing up, you can, everyone could clearly see this from far off. The same thing with the truth. The same thing with the truth. The vertical part can be called the pillar and the ground is the, and the floor is the ground. By the way, who is that truth that the Bible is always talking about? The Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and Thomas is having a sort of conversation here in John 14, 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest and how can we know the way? And Jesus answered to him, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. The Lord Jesus Christ is the truth. The Lord Jesus Christ is the truth. It means that the very purpose of the existence of the church is to bear the name of the Lord Jesus Christ up high in the sky, as high as we can, so that people may see and know him. The Bible says, and as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up high. Brethren, the Bible says the church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. The church is you and me. The, visibis the visibility of the truth depends on how high we lift the Lord Jesus Christ up. Depends on how we behave in the house of God on how we behave in our daily walk. We're going to get back to that later. Why God wants us to lift, uh, lift the truth. Why God wants us to lift the truth. John 8, 32, the Bible says, You shall know the truth. And that's the reason why. Because the truth shall make you free. Man is born in the bondage of sin, as Brother Frank mentioned earlier. The man is born is in the bondage of sin. For I know that in me, in, in Romans 7, 18, For I know that in me, this is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to, will, to, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. That is a bondage to sin. For the good that I would not, I do not, the apostle so said, but the evil which I would not, that I do. This is what we are in our unsaved state. We are in the bondage of sin. But thank God the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is the new creature. If anyone be in Christ, Christ is the truth. He is a new creature. This is what the Bible describes as liberty from sin. Liberty from the bondage of sin. How do we worship God? How do we worship God? Very common verse. But the our comment and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That is why it is very important that the truth shall stay up high in the sky. For the Father seeketh worship to for the Father seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in truth. 
Why do we need to, to uplift and let the people know the truth? Because God wants us to worship Him in spirit and truth. The Muslims, you know the Muslims? The Muslims worship their God sincerely. Wrongly, wrongly, but they worship their God sincerely. Maybe more than we do. Maybe many other religions as well. But the problem is, it is not the truth. The truth is not in it. If, if you happen to see a Muslim pray, who, who saw a Muslim pray here before? Mm -hmm. Do you know how sincere they, they pray? Their face is right on the floor. That's how sincere mm -hmm. they worship their God. And we seldom do it. To stitch the, 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 the idea together, let's say this together, let's go back to the main text. Let's go back to the main text. But if I tarry long, that thou mayst know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Apostle Paul is saying that to keep the truth or to keep the Lord Jesus up high in the sky so that man will see him has certainly something to do with how the church, how you and me, ought to behave in the house of God. This verse has mentioned it very clearly. Has something to do with how each and every believer live their lives as member of the body of Christ. Apostle Paul is saying that to keep the truth up high, it has something to do with you and me and our behavior and how we ought to behave in the church of the living God. We may know all the good doctrines, we may memorize the entire Bible, we may have heard a lot of good preaching, we may have been in Christian, been a Christian for a long time, but if we behave not as we ought to behave, as required by the Lord, as something that we ought to do, we're not holding up the Lord up high in the sky like a strong pillar. The Bible is pretty clear on commands and instructions on how we ought to behave in the church of God. The Bible has instructed us in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as we see the day approaching. Malachi 3, 10 said, Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, that there be meat in mine house. God is clear that in that command that our, tithe is, uh, our, our giving of tithes is not to fulfill the law of Moses, but in that verse it says, it says that it's, uh, in this case, its purpose is to provide the needs of the house of God to keep it going. And he did promise abundant blessings for that particular verse. We're giving our tithes not in the purpose of doing it as a, as a law of Moses. It is clear that it is to keep the church or the house of God going. The Bible instructed us how fathers, mothers, children ought to behave at home. There's a lot of it in the Bible. The Bible instructed us on how each individual in the church ought to behave towards each other. A lot of it is in the Bible. It is easy for us to fail. You and me. It is easy for us to fail, fail to behave the way we ought to. We even try to make excuses and justify ourselves. We always made bad choice of not obeying God's command. But please don't call it liberty. Call it disobedience. And please remember that every time we fail to behave how we ought to be, the integrity of the pillar and the ground is being compromised like white ants attacking the posts of our houses. Amen. Depending on the magnitude of their damage caused, some are repairable, while some suffers total collapse. You can see, you can hear buildings collapse. There's something wrong with the main structures. Something wrong with the pillar and the ground. Something's wrong with the pillar and the ground. How about the foundation? How about the foundation? Do, you, do we give a meter of foundation to the devil causing the pillar to tilt? Are we going to let the devil, are we going to let a meter 
Just like a leaning tower of Pisa, just a meter, it causes it to tilt. Are we gonna let the devil take that soft one meter? Many churches have fallen into the temptation of ecumenicalism. In a bid to look good, churches try, churches try to attract as many members as they can, took a little bit of this, took a little bit of that, then let's just be happy together and don't worry about behaving and lifting the Lord up high. Mm -hmm. Compromising a meter strip of soap spot, soap spot to develop the devil caused the pillar to till. Give another meter, Make it to the pillar tilts further. Give more areas, then the pillar finally collapses. Mm -hmm. There is only one strong foundation where the pillar and ground should be founded upon. Mm -hmm. And you know by heart who is that. Amen. The rock of our salvation Amen. is only by the principles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Churches who diverted their attention to projects and programs and other things instead of behaving as God wants us to behave, ends up tilted, 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 and eventually collapses. There is the danger. If, the, if this uh, pillar and ground of the truth collapses, he is the danger. Have a look in Isaiah 59, 14. Isaiah 59, 14, 14. Here is the danger if we let the devil or we do not do our part to keep that pillar and ground on its proper position. And judgment is turned away backward and justice is standing afar off for truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. Once the truth has fallen, it will not be visible anymore to men. People will be asking, where are the Christians? Where is the truth? Who said they have Jesus? Who said they have the truth? And it's very hard to reach those people anymore if the, the pillar and ground is not, is not in its proper position anymore. The worst thing is not only that the truth is no more visible, it is trodden underfoot. The truth will be trodden underfoot if this pillar and ground collapses. It will be trodden underfoot. Nowadays, men blasphemes God as if they are swearing their mates. They just say the word of God in vain as if they are swearing their mates. People will unload their frustration by mixing swearing words with the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how the truth is being trampled nowadays. That's how the truth is being trampled. Christians, the Bible this morning is pleading each of us this morning. The Bible saying in, in uh, Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. There is a desperate call from our Lord to keep the pillar and ground of truth steady. There is a desperate call, Christians. Keep the truth up high in the sky. Are we going to make commitment to God that we will behave as we ought to for the sake of keeping the truth up high in the sky? So that man will see it, so that man will come to the Lord for salvation. God is so good. We may have failed so many times, a few times or so many times, but God is a God of second chance. There is always second chance. In 2 Chronicles, the Bible says, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, If my people, if my people, not if the other people, or not, are not the same people, God said, if my people, which are called by my name, that's why you're Christians, you're called by the name of Jesus Christ, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Amen. 
we have heard a lot of it here in the pulpit that Australia is going downhill. God is as not asking for the unsaved to humble themselves. God is asking that if my people humble themselves, Australia will be helped. Sin is not only doing the bad things, Christians. The Bible says to them that know what to do good and do it not. To him it is a sin. You can see in the newspaper, you can see on television, that it's not only in the third world countries there's uh, terrible things happening. It is happening here, right in front of you, right in, 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 your, in your neighborhood. It is getting worse and worse. Why? The truth is not, almost not anymore there. The pillar and ground of truth is not anymore there. This morning, Christians, this is just a simple, uh, just a simple um, invitation from the Lord, asking, will we humble ourselves to come to the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for everything that you have provided us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we have the responsibility to be the pillar and the ground of the truth. This is the last institution, Lord, that has the truth. And I just pray, Lord, that every one of us here this morning, every person this morning, Lord, will realize that we need to uplift the truth. We need to uplift the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is by behaving ourselves, Lord, as we ought to behave, as according to your words. I pray, Lord, this morning that um, give us a humble heart and make us commit, Lord, to you with the power of the Holy Spirit that we may be able, Lord, to behave what we ought to be, to uphold your name up high. Forgive us, Lord, for the time that we are not doing that, that we fail now. Forgive us for the time that we don't behave as we ought to be. And I just pray, Lord, that with the Holy Spirit, you can help us, Lord, to walk our lives in according to your will. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ to die on the cross that has provided a salvation, Lord. And that truth, Lord, need to be shared to others. It could be our relatives, Lord. It could be our children. It could be our co-workers, everyone who knows us, Lord. Without the truth, they can never be saved, Lord. You are the only way of salvation. You said you are the way, the truth, and the life. Help us, Lord, to uphold the truth this morning. And help us make the commitment. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.